talks with Lauren. This is a show where we talk about emerging trends in the data world to enable people to stay informed. Now, in today's topic, we're going to discuss about data validation checks that a developer will put in place so that a user who is using an application, whether it's a web application or an, a mobile application, they can be able to actually um, input data correctly and the data can be received in the database correctly. I'm joined today by a guest who is going to walk us through this topic because um, he's developed apps before and um, definitely the validation checks that we talked about. So that's what we're going to talk about and let him introduce himself. Karibu. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. I'm Makoel Godfrey, a self-taught developer. I have about uh, 10 years experience in web development. I'm glad to be hosted here and looking forward to the talks. Makori, what would you say are the sources of data uh, before it gets into the application and into the database eventually? Yeah, from an application side, uh, we view the source of data for as one, mm. uh, inputs by the user. Yeah. Uh, two, it's not common, but uh, also sometimes we have data from an old system mm -hmm. that requires importing or ingesting to your, uh, to your new system. Mm -hmm. It could be yeah. through um, um, uh, Excel imports or a database, an old database, mm -hmm. so you have to write um, ETLs or mm -hmm. things to convert the data from the old to the new. Yeah. And thirdly, yeah. uh, this common nowadays, uh, these are sources by third parties, okay. be it uh, verifying the data or uh, something else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Makori, uh, I believe an application is the first point where a user um, gets to interact with the interface because that's the point where they enter the login information, they sign up to an application, and then now they proceed to enter data, which is basically going to the database. So based on your experience, what are some of the validation checks that you put in place to ensure that these users are actually entering correct data? Indeed, indeed, uh, you're right, because um, people talk about data, but not many people talk about um, the user journey and how that data is sourced. Um, from a web uh, developer or a, a developer um, mm -hmm. perspective, there are so many things we do regarding data. Yeah. First is um, you, you have to make sure that the user understands what they are sending over. Yes. Uh, be, be it their username, be it their email. Because sometimes you find um, a form says input your username. So it's sometimes not clear should you put a email, um, a, a first name, and all that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you find probably provide a hint yeah. so that you. You, you make you reduce the the probability of an error yeah. through providing uh, descriptive text to the user so that they enter exactly what you require or what the application um, requires. Okay. Then, in terms of validation, yeah. if it is specifically an email, you, we have to check if it's the email uh, format, mm -hmm. if it's a if it's a username, there's the character length, yes. the minimum and maximum that we check. Yeah. Um, if it is an image, sometimes yeah. there's uh, limitations by size mm -hmm. so also the, uh, the aspect of user experience comes in yeah. so that uh, you have to ensure that uh, a user uploading an image yeah. finds it easy yeah. you know nowadays Facebook Twitter have, have raised the standards mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. a user expects to upload an image then they'll be able to crop it mm -hmm. size it so that by them they're submitting yeah. it's perfect to them and also it's perfect to you okay. so uh, those are some of the evolutions that have happened in, in data yeah. now the users are more keen on what they're sending yeah. privacy is also another discussion yeah. uh, but uh, that's it yeah okay and yeah. also the the aspect of the calendar because yeah. that sometimes the formats vary yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. The, date time is a huge huge thing yeah. because of um, People being in various region, mm -hmm. regions mm -hmm. uh, have different um, formats mm -hmm. of, of dates, yeah. and also entering a date sometimes is cumbersome. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, uh, most applications will have a date picker. Yes. Uh, uh, so you'll click on it, and probably mm -hmm. um, the the current date will be the default one, and then yeah. you navigate through the years and months, and yeah. finally the date. Yeah. So that makes it seamless, mm -hmm. and now it has become uh, a norm for a date. Okay. Uh, we, we, we no longer provide raw inputs and then format mm -hmm. uh, to the user, because then there's huge likelihood mm -hmm. of, um, of an error. Right. Someone can confuse the month and the date, yeah. and then 
you have a wrong age or a wrong uh, d- date submission. Okay. Yeah. And then when it comes to the null fields, because um, I personally I've experienced such that in, in the database you yeah. get there are so many null fields, how do you factor it in yeah. when it comes to the front end? Yeah, so uh, coming to the first point is communicating to the, cust- to the, to the customer or the user of the application. Yes. So you have to indicate yeah. whether that particular input is mandatory or not. Mm-hmm. If it is, then you have to indicate it is there probably by a red star normally. Mm. That's a standard nowadays. Yes. Or um, you can write in text that this is mandatory. Mm. Um, and then besides that, before they submit, again, there's the aspect of you checking if, mm. they, have sub- if, if they have inputted mm-hmm. uh, uh, that field. Okay. Yeah. And then um, there's also the aspect of, like, let's say, narratives, yeah. where you have like people who are collecting data from uh, different users in the same environment. For yes. example, they've been sent to Rwanda, for example, yeah. to collect data on a particular occurrence there. Mm. So they have the same sort of narrative, but then uh, when it comes to filling it in, mm. they're filling it in in different formats. How do we take care of such like cases, the narrative bits? Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's not a common mm-hmm. uh, approach for collecting data, yeah. but it makes it very um, easy for the, for the, for the, uh, for the user yes. in that they are describing it, but mm-hmm. in the process of that narration, mm-hmm. they provide data. Correct. So it would be like a sentence, so maybe there's a place that will have a drop down with values. Yes. So let's say it will be maybe you uh, you have visited the hospital. Mm-hmm. Then there's there's a drop down or an input to input the number of times you have visited yeah. in the last one year. So yeah. it's pros. So by by them fi- fi- completing that yeah. uh, paragraph or those uh, narrations, mm-hmm. in the process they submit the data um, as compared to you having mm-hmm. um, inputs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Also, regarding validation, you talked to me about this um, in terms of having a second eye when it comes to cross-checking whatever is going in the database so sure. that you are sure of the data being yes. answered, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, having a second eye first mm-hmm. um, to the user, if it's a long form, you find probably someone might have made an error um, because probably took longer, there was instructions and all. So what we do is there's usually a, a preview yes. step. Yes. So with that, we'll preview all the data that uh, they've submitted, be it um, in the multiple steps. Mm-hmm. We, we, we preview everything, including images, files, mm-hmm. so that they know and then they consent to submitting that data. That is very important uh, for scenarios where either the long is the, 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 the form is too long yes. or the data is sensitive and they might not be room to edit after that mm-hmm. uh, especially when you find it in government uh, applications mm-hmm. uh, and all that because once you submit it's it creates an application and th- that is now goes to someone else to take action on it yeah. uh, right okay and then there's the aspect of security which is a very very big factor yeah can you talk about that sure sure um security terms of data from the front end side yeah. uh or the application side because you see in application, if especially the back office, yeah. you'll have um, users with different roles. Um, so with that, we build what we call a role or permissions um, uh, feature. Mm-hmm. Then now, the super admin is able to allocate mm-hmm. a, um, a permission to to, to a role, yeah. uh, so that when you log in, you'll be, you'll view those. Uh, features yes. that are tied to that particular permission. Yeah. Yes. Right, Godfrey, aside from the considerations that we are, are taken care of in the front end, yeah. what are those that are being taken care of in the back end? Sure, sure. So yeah. the first step being the user providing the data. Now we have to validate the data yes. in the back end besides it being validated on the front end. Then um, from that, from after validation on the back end, then now we, we, we store it or persist it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. The same validation that was on the front end, mm-hmm. that's now what we do mm-hmm. in the back end. Mm-hmm. However, now with back end, we might have some extra things to, to check. Yeah. So if it's someone provided an email, yeah. we can check if that email has already been used and present the relevant error mm-hmm. and return the data that they had already presented and so yeah. that they can make an adjustment yeah. or make yeah. a decision. Yeah. So there's the validation bit, yeah. then there's the persistent uh, bit to the database. Yeah. So after that point, that's where now the 
big data that analyst guys come in yeah. but usually people talk about data from that point but yes. not uh, before that point before of, that of, point. of storage right. so storing uh, is very key um, especially nowadays uh, data there's so much data coming from users and application mm. have uh, more users as compared to years back yeah. so there's various factors we use to ensure that the data is consistent and also uh, in terms of speed mm -hmm. in that we, we are able to persist it quicker mm -hmm. and also we are able to or the data uh, data guys are able to retrieve it faster mm -hmm. so for for that we might use indexing yeah. uh, to the databases and also if uh, the, uh, the size allows for the application for mm -hmm. the data we can use sharding and other optimization uh, mm -hmm. tools Okay. Yeah. What about soft deletion? Yeah, soft deletion is something else yeah. that um, that now comes when maybe you want to to clear something or mm -hmm. hide a record to the user. Mm -hmm. Because what happens is every every entry is taken like a log, so we don't really delete, but yeah. rather hide it, yeah. so that you you the user will not be presented by those records that are um, not soft deleted okay yeah so deletion is important so that if that record is tagged yeah. to other records yeah. um, the, re the relation is still uh, is still intact mm. even if the data is deleted so mm. per se there's no deletion mm. but rather uh, we employ the aspect of soft deletion okay yeah all right um as you conclude yeah. i'd like you to just uh, describe something i think one of the most important factors based on what you've just talked about is the aspect of requirements gathering it has to be very very clear yeah. right and you are giving me an example of a passport uh, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. you so can talk about that for sure yeah. so that is, is in line with having descriptive text yes and also understanding your users mm -hmm. uh, so you have to ask yourself um, you know um, who will be the users yeah. the education level the level or complexity of the language you're going to use because yeah. i remember back i was telling you these stories we did some uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, business registry platform for yeah. for somalia so yeah. english there is not very you know the, the prof english profession is not that high mm -hmm. so we had we just requested the users to provide uh, passports as photo yeah so when the data clerks were getting feedback to us yeah. they're like guys are actually uploading photos of their passport yeah. and not uh, passport size photos okay. so with that we realize it's us who, who did not did not describe uh, what exactly we required True. so we made that adjustment and we could actually see yeah. uh, the errors uh, re re reducing so you can imagine so something small like that yeah. will require now the user to be contacted to re-upload the correct um, the correct image yeah yeah so such things are what things that come in when you don't mm. do the right things uh, yeah. okay so requirements gathering is very important in this aspect how you say it and whatever you're asking for is very key when you are talking to the users in terms of uploading the data and uh, in general just um, uh, whatever they're supposed to enter in the, in the system right so in conclusion do you have any other thing you want to say um, not not much. Just yeah. that um, you know, people need to also to factor in yeah. the the prerequisite or the prerequisite steps of data because mm -hmm. everybody talks about data yeah. after it has been stored. Yeah. But people forget that uh, there are so many things yeah. or errors that come with that data that's already stored that could have been mitigated um, mm -hmm. by employing the right steps. And the right mechanisms uh, before it was stored. Okay. So it's some of the things that we we help yeah. uh, to prevent. All right. Yeah. So thank you so much, Makori. It was a very insightful conversation. I believe whatever Makori has just said um, will really help, and that's why we're having this conversation today. I hope you learned something, and I hope uh, you're going to utilize it as a software developer or even as a user who is keying in data. So thank you so much for coming. Most welcome.